Hey everyone, my name is Simpsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4. We're playing as Ukraine back on the Cross the Dnieper mod. So, here today we're going to try and stabilize our Eastern Front. It is the 5th of February 2016. Unfortunately, the three separatist oblasts of Donetsk, Kharkiv and Luhansk still remain in rebellion. Unfortun unfortunately, in this alternative timeline, we weren't able to retake Kharkiv back, so we've lost a huge tank manufacturing district in the north. We obviously still don't control Crimea. We're still making plans and preparations to build up for the inevitable invasion, working through the focus tree, uh, Poroshenko is currently our faction leader, El Presidente. We've got some spare political power. We're going to bring in... Uh, what? Which one's the best that we sort of need? Political power numbers. Expect a number factory goods. I wish we could get access to some of these other ones. I think you have to change the, I the, I the ideology otherwise. Alright. We did manage to subdue Odessa and annex and conquer Transnistria, so I don't know if the entire territory of Kharkiv is worth, well, Transnistria. We have 135k manpower sitting, and we currently have Valery Zaluzhny. He is currently our best active field commander. He's controlling the troops on the Eastern Front. Four five-star commander now, we're currently getting as much equipment and material as we can. Nice. We can get a higher caliber of rifle. Uh, anything else here? Probably go with... Uh, I do kind of want to... Kind of... Out... It's going to... The thing is, like, do we go with the RF doctrine of just a mass amount of shitty artillery? Or do we have like a couple highly specialized ones? The thing is, if we can somehow match their artillery and count, hit them back with counter battery, that would be ideal. We also need anti-air upgrades as well, as the RF aviation is gonna be absolutely deadly against us. We don't have an air force to combat it, so. Javelins, stingers, whatever we can get. And also going to the international market, trying to get in javelins. We've been able to actually negotiate with Belarus to get T90 chassis, T72s as well, which is quite funny. We might be using it against them. Uh, Navy-wise, we're currently focusing on submarines purely, so we can convoy raid there convoys and ships in the Black Sea. Let's go with the Ukraine NATO Commission. Slowly but surely trying to get closer to the West and making plans and preparations. Building up our logistics and supply um, as best we can. But so far, we're in a bit of a time of peace. The Minsk Agreement has been signed. We will need to prepare for cross-border fighting. Lithuania is giving us more equipment. Nice. Uh, which one do I want? Infrastructure and construction speed. That's what they did do with that. Okay. We can't go Ukraine home to all. Uh, where else can we go down here? Maybe a need for reform. There's just so much good stuff. Hungary has invested into Ukraine. <laughs> That's a little bit unlike Viktor Orban, but okay. Maybe he's not in charge at this point in time. Who knows? Let's reattach them. Okay. So we've gone back and forth constantly, reshuffling from focusing on support and then weapons to then other equipment. Um, I think we probably want to go down to the left-hand side of the tree. 
Maybe let's go with Lessons of the Donbass and Lessons of Crimea. Let's go with Improve Anti-Air 2. And we're slowly but surely converting some of our military factories that we've acquired. Maybe getting some more anti-air, focusing on that. Fuel-wise, we're good. Oh, nice. Hoi 4 is released. Oh, my God. 2016. Can't wait for Hoi 5 whenever that comes out. Okay, industrial industry. Uh, what do I want to go with? Electronic research, construction, infrastructure. Being able to not rely purely on Western support is probably not a bad idea. The more of our own infrastructure we can get, the better. The Brexit referendum succeeds. Interesting. The need to survive. So, we've got, what? Six, five years or so. I believe there's not an exact time period when the full-scale invasion kicks off, but it's something you have to say. Oh, nice. We finally have access to actually recruiting our own divisions. Good. So if we can get a couple hundred of those, that would be ideal. So let's start off with just recruiting some default divisions, and we'll look to edit and customize them a little bit later. So we've got armored divisions, mechanized, airborne, infantry, artillery, militia, Azov, uh, anti- Police force, Donbass, Militia. So let's set them all in Kiev. And if we can sort of grow our numbers a bit, maybe just having some massive cannon fodder divisions might not be too bad. Uh, just briefly looking at the division design. These aren't terrible. I could purely like make an artillery one though. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea. I think our best bet is, look, if you've got limited aviation, that's an issue. <laughs> Not having air support and hearts of iron four or close air support is pretty bad. If you do have a limited navy, I think you're better off going with submarines rather than frigates or destroyers. As we've got a limited manpower population, potentially getting anti-air and artillery divisions is probably the play. And we already do know that their doctrine is going to be mass assault and pretty artillery heavy and attack helicopter, so we're going to need anti-air to, de uh, to deal with that. And yeah, I think we're probably better off actually just getting a bunch of our own in-house artillery where we can, rather than f focusing on highly specialized western ones in such limited amount, because if we... The thing is, if we lose like one HIMAR unit. Are we better off just to have 10 Shia artillery pieces? You know what I mean? For the cost of one. Okay, September now, 2016. So, we've actually got a bunch of artillery in air. Rocket artillery is good. We could probably swing to... other stuff. So, we are going to get submarines. One in 2016, one in 2017. Let's try and build up our military infrastructure. We've only got four research at the moment as well. I guess we could go with a different airframe. Okay. So, let's add a bit more of them. Nice. Czechia is investing in our country. Now, if I can have somewhere between... 150, 200 ideally. We might be able to make things work. Okay, let's get a different anti-tank. Let's bring up the Karl Gustav. Let's go with improved artillery. Two. Oh no, we need to go with that first. My bad. We can't change our conscription requirement yet. So, it's going to be interesting to see how well we perform in this series when the full war breaks off because I think you can have a far superior time against their specialized forces if you've got these three oblasts fully directly under your control. It just makes things harder. 
So we'll try and hold the territory where we can. Uh, we're probably gonna have to reallocate some units down to the peninsula. And then... Hey, Donald Trump got elected, okay. Poland's still accepting more stuff. I guess we just try and hold out as long as we can. The longer we can survive, the better. I think that's sort of the point of this series. You sort of just need to hold on for as long as you can, and then you can do your own counter-offensive. We can always use the Nipro as a natural defense barrier if we have to give up the east. Give up the east, everything east of the river. Keep everything of the west. Maybe we get in NATO or something. I don't know. Worst case scenario. But hopefully we can uh, survive until the current start date, but who who knows? Okay, let's start moving those divisions eastward. As it is now December 2016. Our manpower has gone down a bit. But I'm assuming we're going to be able to force, conscript, and mobilize everyone. Okay. The DPR and the LR have the majority of the units. The Archive Republic doesn't really have that much on the border, surprisingly. Maybe because they're not meant to be a free and independent state. Unfortunately, we allowed them. They were just too dug in. Hopefully, that is not the dagger in the north. Because we're not going to be able to entrench as well. We're not going to be able to build stuff around Bilgorod. Okay, let's go with improved artillery too. No more regulations or laws we can change. Okay, so unfortunately Poroshenko's popularity is falling a bit, but that might be sensible and realistic to bring in Zelensky. Okay, let's improve this. Uh, artillery, uh, what do I want to go with? I'm actually kind of tempted to go with like an anti-air, but it'll take longer. Maybe go with submarines too, actually. 140 days, it'll be worth it. If we can have basically a wolf pack down in the south, it's probably our best bet. I don't think we're going to need convoys. We can get a lot of stuff flown in from Poland or used on the railway system. Okay, so we've built up a decent amount of supplies, which I think we've got enough to waste. So, because we haven't had much fighting now for a couple of years, and we're moving fresh new, new divisions to the front, I think we'll chuck everyone on exercise. Now, the only worry is we are expending valuable equipment we can use, but it might be worth it because we're going to be coming up against at least in the first half proper professional soldiers very experienced vetive and let's just try and get our own custom fourth gen craft here okay and let's try and move them to the border still training still keeping a watchful eye yeah I don't know what happened to my air force I started off with 80 maybe it was seized. As a lot of our, I think half our, more than half our navy <laughs> defected to the other side, to the Federation, unfortunately. Oh my god, we can ask for Poland just for a bunch of FB mini rifles. <laughs> sure, whatever we can get, it doesn't really bother me. Okay, out with the old. Let's try and re uh, modernize the infantry. Okay, we're getting improved artillery, which is nice. Yep. Getting a three or so a week. Um, I might take the ahead of time penalty. We'll see. Oh, that's going to take a thousand days. I can't do... I can't get any of these other chassis. Okay, let's go within with the new, which will give us experience for officers. Advanced trajectory calculation and stable platforms is probably what I eventually want to go down to. I quite like that. Okay, so 
We can actually bring in Valeria's Illusiony there. We can re-customize some of our army doctrines as well. We haven't even had access to that yet. Sending it 41k. Now, we do have a small enclave of territory far in between. Um, <laughs> we could paratroop some units in there, maybe. I don't know. I don't know why that is technically under our regional administration. Technically. A little bit weird. A little bit bizarre, but okay. Okay, let's uh, change the colors slightly. Just so it's a little bit easier for me to see. But hopefully we can do enough in and around and between before the war. Here we go. So I think... Oh, no, I misclicked. I should have gone with not... Oh, I shouldn't have gone with strategic destruction. I should change that stuff. Fuck. I should have gone with battlefield support. That was a misclick. Because that's all we really have at the moment. <laughs> Close air support. Uh, military agreements with the West. Yep. There's just so much good stuff in the tech tree to go down. <laughs> Such a hard decision. Okay, now we're sitting at about 30k manpower. currently have 84 divisions in training, but we're going to be sort of thankful for this time of peace as we've got time to build up. Good chunk of rocket artillery moving to the front, and now we've got 4k. Now, because I don't know when this invasion is going to happen, I might have to cancel some of these divisions, because then that frees up, what, 116k. Okay. I just wanted to see how many we had locked. So it was actually the full amount. So we might actually try and re-get some of those. Okay. Let's go with Submarine 2. We're not going to worry about any patrol stuff. So what are we looking at now? We've got 14 subs. I think I want to just continue to get, like, Submarine 4. I think that would be good. Because we're probably not going to have access to... Storm Shadow and... Whatever they use to hit the Black Sea port. Okay, so... Let's be a little bit more frugal of what we... Put that to. Um, so we can't go down the... NATO one, but we can do our own sort of Ukrainian one. That's cool. Alright, we've got close air support coming along. Um, oh, right, this is for our... The Mikolaev shipyard. Improved submarine stuff. Okay, a little bit of a border conflict here. Why did 31 get split off? Happens from time to time. Okay, nice. All of those military factories have been converted. And now we can... Try and straight up construct some more. Alright, uh, still continue here. Oh, perfect. We can actually like pur purchase stuff straight from NATO. So let's, yeah, let's get artillery, let's get arms. Actually, probably need to focus on javelins and stingers more or less. Another Independence Day. Poland sending us more equipment. We're slowly but surely getting rid of the old Soviet doctrine, getting rid of our Soviet hangover, as it were. It's only been a couple of decades since we've been independent, realistically. Okay, it's probably time to put those guys that are new, fresh recruits on exercise as well. I'm feeling comfortable that we're, built, we're slowly but surely building up enough logistics and material. If not, I wouldn't be um, training. So let's go with three. So, 2017, we do actually get access. We should realistically get access to our own in-house bullpup. But I guess we're just using the AK platform still. Uh, we could integrate the militias. That's probably not a bad idea. And we can probably add a couple more of these. 161k now. So we can do a bit more. I just don't want to get to a point where we've got no manpower we can dive into. Because we did lose like 60k before. Which was kind of... A big chunk. We could have afforded not to lose that. Yeah, we just struggled to um, push into Kharkiv, unfortunately. Purchase F-16s. 
Okay, so it's going to be a little while. Those NATO rifles and javelins are coming over. Because uh, Barack Obama didn't send javelins. He refused, didn't he? But I think the Trump administration actually sent them in the end. So now that he's in, we can probably request a bunch from his administration. Uh, end laws. Let's just try and get some of those. And continue to ferry everyone over. All right. Increased logistics there. I didn't realize how close like Belarus actually was to us in the north there. It's mostly forestry, so it's probably going to be quite hard for them to get through there. Uh, Zaluzny can now be an infantry expert, so he's rank 5 now, moving on 6, which is good. Really got some natural traits. Could eventually be potential president after Vladimir Zelensky, who we haven't even brought in yet. Okay, let's try and add this a little bit more now. As we've got a bunch of manpower spare. So, maybe I should have just waited <laughs> a little bit later. Okay, anything else we can go down here? D-Oligarch, guys. I think I see you say that. D-Oligarch. Let's go with infantry equipment for three. And we're going to get a bonus here as well. Okay. So, I think... Yeah, we've roughly got over 100 divisions in active service. So, we've increased it by 40 within two years. Hopefully we can get that a bit more. Uh, let's continue to rid the corrupt oligarchs. We still can't go with this. Um, oh wow, so the fight is here. So we can go, I didn't even see this. That's that's when like stuff full on kicks off. Um, I don't really know if that's, that's other stuff. All right, let's move there. Okay, there's been a little bit of pushback, unfortunately. Okay, February now, 2018. Now, I could reorganize this slightly. So, not quite, hang on. We don't want to send... Oh, shit, hang on. Instead of having three armies, let's just have one big one, I think. Alright, let's go through and... Bring out a mixture of experience and fresh recruits. Now, I don't know how many, ideally... Oh, I was one off. <laughs> you need to sort of survive the event. Oh my god. Bear with me. There we go. So, so many divisions to manage. It's such a big map. <laughs> I like it, though. Really enjoying this mod so far. I do wish there was more zoomed-in scenarios like this. For example, you don't always want to necessarily play a full Germany series. You, like, sometimes you just want to play, like, the French. The, uh... The Reich Conquest of... France, zoomed in, that'd be cool, or maybe on the eastern front. Okay, so, for whatever reason, we can't negotiate getting more trade in. Maybe once we stop constructing, that'll be a thing. Okay, so now we're getting to about 70 or so. I keep on not doing that properly. Right, so Zaluzhny has 72. And then we've got 35 with the other bloke. You can't even negotiate with them <laughs> to get stuff. Hungary is still continuing to invest, which is nice. Um, constantly looking into events and decisions. April now, 2018. Okay. Um... We want to go with this one. We want to go with Wolf Pack. That's eventually what we want to get down to. Have the Wolf Pack. Let's go with Field Hospital there. And no, Recon Company rather than Military Police. Now we're going down Oligarch stuff. Let's try and fix up the taxation here. 
Okay, so at the moment, we still don't have units on the southern border. We will have to move back up north at some point. All right, let's go back into the international arms market. The more javelins we can get, the better. Because if we can crush their tanks, their BMPs, their aviation, we might be able to win this war. Or at least not crumble in defeat. Because from what we experienced fighting with their regular infantry, it was pretty challenging. The DPR and stuff, not so much, but the actual, like, regular Federation troops? Yikes. Okay, we're actually getting improved anti-stuff here. Anti-air. Right, we've got another fresh tank unit coming up. Uh, improved equipment. Maybe we do get military police there. To improve our situation in Transnistria. In Transnistria. Um, so our support equipment's good. I do try and want to probably spread this out a bit. We have 46. Ugh, just the steel we don't have, which is super annoying. Okay. July 2018. Hopefully we're making good progress. It's gonna. It's just like yeah, we're not gonna know. <laughs> 100% stability, 55 war support, 89 factories in total. We have committed our fuel commitment fully, but now our logistics is sitting at around about 61% filled, so it could be significantly higher. We've got 113 convoys, but I don't think we're really relying on them that much. Like, we're not going to be able to use them up the Dnipro. Like, we might trade up through the Danube, maybe. But. I don't know exactly. 114 should be enough, anyway. Okay, anything else we can go with here? We can't kick that off. <laughs> I can't believe we conquered Transnistria. <laughs> Moldova refused to deal with them. <laughs> so at least they won't be able to attack from... The West. I don't think they ever launched from there, though. Although there was military troops stationed in the country. Uh, we can probably promote Bukhanov. So. We'll move more units to go under the command of Ruslan uh, Chamakchuk or whatever. <laughs> These names. I keep on forgetting them. <laughs> I pronounced them right the first time and then forget. Um, what do I want to go with? Armored train? Himlars? It's probably not a bad idea. Emlars. Okay. The Rada is stable for now. Let's prepare for border in skirmishes again. Would like to request more military equipment. Um, to go with down now. Still can't get any of this stuff yet. Maybe improved armor. Yeah, at the moment we're focusing on the Lviv tank factory. Because we've lost the Kharkiv one. Oh, that still pisses me off so much. But alas, if we can win this war, them being separatists, probably will help us. Uh, some agents. I don't really know necessarily what to do with them. Move more units to the Yuna, the border. Okay, slowly but surely, putting in the groundwork and the support so we can have a successful campaign as we look to end now 2018. Sitting in and around December. Because you don't know, they could still surprise attack us early, but only time will tell. Okay. Ah, oh, nice. Vladimir Zelensky has announced his candidacy. So, hmm. Petro Poroshenko, the chocolate king, <laughs> seems to be doing all right so far in this series. I don't know if we want to get rid of him, but it might be one of those things where we don't get access to a huge good part of the check. It's uh 
tech tree if we don't go with Zelensky. Let's negotiate with the Poles to get some more javelins. We do have some of our own in laws and stuff and Carl Gustafs that we can get. Like similar to that. But yeah, javelins the better we can get the better. Um I might take the no, actually we'll go with rocket. I was gonna say I'm tempted to take the time ahead penalty, but we're not. Let's uh, reform the National Guard. So we're sitting at 138k. So that's double what we lost first time around. Lithuania. Supporting the country. Nice. So now we're getting closer to 140 divisions. And submarine 5? Oh, that's going to take so long. But then that, that might be worth it. And then we can get a bonus from there. So that means... We're going to have, like, the best subs, probably. So let's actually reallocate them further back there, actually. Because I don't want to... Yeah, I want them in the port of Odessa to protect that. Because if we can have naval supremacy... And basically stop any full-scale amphibious attack, that would be fantastic. So early coastal support stuff is probably not bad either. But I think I want to focus all my navy, navy dockyard uh, dockyards on um, naval dockyards on submarines. I think that's the play. But let's just hope this time around that the admiral staff doesn't defect. <laughs> that would be uh, infuriating to say the least. Okay, so. We're going to commit one of our research slots to that one. So we're going to take a big time ahead penalty. Yikes. So it's going to take four years. So we'll see. Should be worth it. All right. So yeah, really nothing has happened too much. Oh, wow. Got some more divisions on the way, but... Hopefully, we've done enough. We've done a lot of work in our, in our artillery. We're building up our units well. Keeping an eye on cross-border skirmishes. So, hopefully we've done enough. Okay. So, our logistics fulfillment is going down a little bit. Steel. Not having enough steel is our major issue at the moment. It's really slowing production of everything down. Uh, we do have access now to armored trains, so let's get some of those. I think you, we can get railgun units. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea at some point to get some of those. They can be handy, particularly on the front line. Okay, let's go with improved radar. Let's get more units to the front again, because we've nearly maxed out there so 150 i kind of want as minimum all right nice the 2019 presidential election let's go with yeah president zelensky look how young and fresh fresh face he looks <laughs> dude he aged so much poor guy i would too okay let's go with improved anti-air there all right well unfortunately on that note it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for episode 3, coming out at the exact same time tomorrow as we continue with the rest of 2019. We're slowly but surely building up the defences and we're going to be under the reign of our new president, Vladimir Zelensky. Alright guys, make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Like and subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. My name has been Simsy. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much.